Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are all doing good. Happy Friday, everybody. Oh my gosh, happy, happy, happy Friday. Let me see if I can get all my stuff going on. I can't, I'm having my own, you know me, I have to have a technical difficulty. I can't have it all like be, I can't have it all be like perfect. <laughs> I think that would make my life like so not me and not who I am if it was perfect. Hey Jennifer, how are you? That was the longest three hours. Hey Michelle, that was the longest three hours ever. Oh my gosh, you guys, it wasn't long enough for me. I have, have been up to my ears and ridiculousness as usual. But, you know, I should know anytime that I schedule something that it is. Hey Pam, I should know how whenever I choose to um, do something live that it's just going to be what it is. It just It's just how my life works lately. I, uh, anyway, so tell me how you guys are. I want to hear everything that's going on in your lives. Um, I want to hear all about it, and I want to know what's going on. And I want to hear about it, what's going on. Thank you, Michelle, for your for your reminders for everyone. I really appreciate it. I got my little mess going on here. I did try to clean up a little bit. I did not find, you know, you guys, I'm going to have to take like probably a week off and just go through my space and find where my lovely sweet daughter put my stuff because <laughs> I spent, oh, I can't even tell you, looking for my stuff. Hi, Elaine. Oh, awesome, Susan. Hey, Bet. Good for you guys using a laptop all the same. I wish I had you guys here. I wish one of you guys was crafting with me. You know, that would be super fun. Before we start making our, our little, you know, faux whatever, I mean, I just want you guys to keep in mind that, you know, anything that I share with you can be used in any way you want. Like, you can make a junk journal the way I'm making this. And so... I just, guys, I want you to keep that in mind. I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. I'm going to try to pick it up for a second. And so I want to show you guys. Remember last, well, I don't know, was it last? A couple of weeks ago, I showed you. We had this whole conversation about die cutting machines. Happy birthday, Pam. Oh, happy birthday. Hi, Lana. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. So before we start making our make along, I wanted to share this little um, die cutting machine with you guys. So I always get these like, um, you know, comments like, I can't afford it. I don't have it. You know, you're still sore from being with your grandbaby, Luana. Oh, but that's so awesome that you got to be with your grandbaby. Um, I was, so, you know, like, sometimes I show you guys, like, I showed you my, I don't know if I have them close by me, but I've showed in the past, let's if I, please, you know, um, I've showed in the past, like, my little earrings and different things that I've made out of tin cans and soda cans, and let me see if I can find a pair, and I'll show you what I made. And I have shared with you guys all my die cutting stuff and different things like that. And um, then I get comments. So you guys comment and say, like, I want or I don't have or I can't afford. So anyway, this is for you that if you have, you know, I'm not telling you. I don't know how much, how much this is called a tag along. And I don't know how much they retail for, but I got this one for like $20. Okay, so... If you look, you can find it. And I know they're called other things too, but I don't quite know what the other names are. If you guys want to put it in the chat chat and say, um, you know, what they're called. So this is a really small die cutting machine and it has a an anchor, like a thing where you can, you know, put it down on your table so that it creates suction. It's not going to create suction on mine because that's a, what do you want to call it? A, you know, 
it's got a plastic thing on it, so it's not going to stick. And it comes with two plates that you put your die between. And so, you know, you can use these type of dies in it. These are called sizzlets. They're like this. And then I have some like this. They're the same type of die, but it's, uh, these are for somebody. Remember I made a journaling charm somewhere that had like skulls in it? Well, this came from this Halloween. Do you see it? It's called, uh, well, what's the name of it? It just says Sizzix. Oh, Sizzlitz dies. I don't know. It doesn't have the name. It's a Halloween die. Anyway, it has a skull on it. So I want to show you guys. So this is how I cut these. I mean, these little round. You can I cut these with a punch, but you could cut them the same way if you found small round dies, and they do have them, and they're not expensive. So what you would do is you would stick your your die in the middle, and you put your two plates together, and then you run it through this tiny machine. Hey, Melissa. Hey, D. Okay, so you run it through this super tiny machine, okay, and, hey, bet, and you, it works just as good as a really big die cutting machine, and they're super cheap. So I'm just telling you that, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money to have cool, you know, cool little dies, and I think these little, does any, anybody pipe in? You know, I also got these, like, I don't know, super cheap. Super, super, super cheap. So, I'm just letting you know that, you know, I told you guys I would show it to you. And then I got these dies, which I love. Somebody, somebody gave me these. Aren't these cool? And they'll work in it, too. This is like a stamp and die set. And they work really good, too. So, I'm just putting it out there to you if you if you decide that you want to you know uh, so the one is saying they're normally forty nine dollars. I can tell you right now you can find these die cutting machines for like I bought mine for twenty, okay, and I bought it online so Look around. I'm just letting you know that you don't have to spend a lot of money. There is there are other brands that are this small too that have these small things. Hey Ash. Okay, Diana's saying she's having a horrible time with any other than wafer dies around me in the shipping for well, you know, you have to look. I, I you know, I'm not a I'm not a big supporter of a lot of big box style stores, but you guys have all those stores where you are, and they um, they have a lot of this stuff. I know sometimes Overstock has some cool stuff. You've been looking on 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 um, Militia saying, "What are you saying, Militia? You've been working. You've been looking for one on eBay." Well, you know, I'm just telling you, don't give up. Okay, I don't know the ins and outs of everything, and I'm not, like, I actually bought this to give this to my daughter. So, I just wanted to share with you, I don't need to do any die cutting on, on, on why you guys have to watch me do it, but I'm just, I just wanted to say that these dies work with it. You do, you may have to put a shim in it, but you'll figure it out, it's not that big of a deal, and so... So, um, you know, I wanted you guys to, to know. So, I know if you guys wanted to put in the chat, like, other things that you know that are inexpensive like this, I'm just letting you know. There's also, girls, if you guys look, okay, Luana's saying a lot of big book stores and crafting stores exclude things like a cricut, a cricket from the coupons and that give 50% off. Well, all I can tell you is this, is that, if I, who live in the middle of the ocean, can find this for $20, you guys can too. The other thing is, you know, there's a lot of selling Facebook groups out there. So if you guys join those selling Facebook groups, and there's a lot of them, 
And um, if you guys join my Facebook group, which is the name of it's in the description box below, Crafting Mamas, and just you know, one of us will add you to it. I'll be happy to post in the group the selling groups that I've had really good experiences with that sell lots of dyes and uh, die cutting machines and that sort of thing. So I'm just letting you guys know. So I don't remember which one of you guys had. And now I know there's another one that's not called a tag along, but it's a similar thing, and you can get it for not expensive as well too. Definitely, you know these die cutting machines. I think it's very hard, especially if you're going to buy a really big one, like a big shot, like the heavier duty, like a big shot, and a, and even this little tag along. Buying them used, I don't think is a big deal because they work. So I just wanted you, you know what, Luana, I've never tried a rolling pin. All I know is that, you know, I bought, I, I have a die cutting machine and I use it all the time. I use it for all kinds of stuff. So I had bought this for my daughter, one of my, my daughter that's like 19. I bought this, had bought with this with her in mind because I was making, she was going off to college and I was making all of these. I told you guys know I live in a touristy area and I was making all of these inexpensive earrings from soda cans. So she came home one time and, and I was and they're in like little stores around here. Everybody likes to buy something handmade here. So I was I bought her this with the, with the thought in mind that she would take it with her and possibly make some earrings and stuff out of recycling and you know find her way to to do all that yay bet bet you're in your phone that's awesome you know I have to tell you I have no um I have no when I try to watch live streams on my phone it just doesn't for whatever reason I have issues I'm not as good as you girls so tell me what your week has been like mine has been ridiculous as usual but I'm hoping that ridiculousness is coming to soon to an end. I'm, folk, I'm, I'm, I'm voting on the, the ridiculousness coming to an end. I have never used a pasta machine for die cutting. If you guys have any, um, if you guys have any input on that, share it with each other in the chat because I've never. Hi, Crystal. Thanks. The earrings are made super cute, super really inexpensive to make. They're alcohol inks. This is a soda can. Well, I, I um, sanded both sides so you can't see the other side. And then I painted them with alcohol inks. These are puka shells from here. If you guys are all... And remember when in the 80s when we all wore puka shells that came from Hawaii? <laughs> these are little puka shells. And then these are really inexpensive little um, stainless steel wires. I'm just saying, look, I, and I totally agree with the used thing, okay? The used thing works for me. So if you guys, and I'm a huge, you know, me and my recycling, I feel like why, why should you buy it new if you can um, get it used and in good condition? So look at, look for it. Do you remember puka shells for sure? Oh my gosh. So I looked, because I have a box of these journals that I've made, and so I spent about an hour and a half looking for the box of my journals, which I didn't find them. So I started to make one as a sample just so you guys could see. And I didn't get totally finished. I got interrupted on top of it. So what we're gonna make it today is like a Midori style, Fedori, Midori style traveler's notebook. Now you can make it out of anything. You can make it out of used packaging. You can make it out of, um, this, is a, this was an envelope. But I got some happy mail in. Okay, so you can make it out of an envelope. You can make it out of anything. This will... Cool ranting. <laughs> but you know me, I have my rants. I'm sorry. It was just... You know what it is? Is you guys... I get all these messages that um, are not necessarily posted in the chats or posted under my videos. And people will ask me, like say, well, you know, you do all these things and I can't afford it and whatever. I get a lot of those. And so I figure if I'm getting say three or four of those a week, I'm certainly sure there's many other people out there having the same thought. So, okay, so I'm missing what you guys are saying, let me see. 
Okay, I haven't tried a pasta machine for die cutting. Um, you know, the thing with the die cutting is you need those little plates. Whether you're using a big shot or you're using a smaller die cutting machine, and I don't know about a Cricut because I don't have one, but you need these plates. So I don't know if they would work through your pasta machine. They may. They may, they may, they may. You know, look at, oh, I'm so glad, oh, I'm so glad you like the earrings, but, you know, before you run out and buy something brand new, scour, Lucy, look on Craigslist, and they do have a thing where you can look on every Craigslist available, that's if you live in the U.S., obviously, if you don't live in the U.S., you can't look at it. But if you look in the U.S. and you look under Craigslist, there's a way that you can look at multiple listings, like multiple, um, I think they'll do like a nationwide listing of it. So there, Luana's talking to you about a Cricut. So, yeah, so a Cricut, I don't have an electronic. I, I've, I've thought about getting a scan and cut, but I haven't done it. I just, I don't need it yet. Okay, Nalisha, here's the deal. Look on Craigslist. Look on Craigslist. Don't look under arts and crafts. Go on, I don't know, if you go to Google, Google Craigslist, Google how to search all of Craigslist. And I don't mean in just in your local town. And you can search all of Craigslist. And then it'll come up. So I'll tell you my Craigslist story and then we'll start. Get your envelopes. Now listen, just so you know, okay, I am not claiming that this is exactly how a Midori or a Fodori is. What I'm showing you is that you see them out there. You can make it out of anything. It's just the same principles. And it's the same principles as making an envelope cover for a junk journal or an envelope junk journal. Okay, let me tell you guys my Craigslist story and then, you know, so get your envelopes out. So that's what this was. This was a, an envelope and I covered it with a napkin. Inside I started doing my, my version of serendipity paper with, because I just had a bunch of stuff laying around. Now I haven't poked the hole. I started to poke holes in it and then I cannot, anyway, we'll go, when we get to the hole poking part, we'll have that discussion. So we're going to cover the front and the back and you can cover it with anything. Hey Renee! You just did a whole thing about recycling. <laughs> you know what? Recycling, you guys, we have to be mindful. You know, we, we really do. And, you know. Oh, you have Gumtree in Australia, which is similar to Craigslist. Okay. So here's my Craigslist story. Okay, so when I bought myself a die cutting machine a while back, where I live, you cannot get dyes inexpensive. You just can't. The, and you know dies, especially for a big shot, the really big fat dies, they can be like anywhere from 20 to, you know, 40, 50, 60, depending upon how big the dies are, right? So I was on a limited budget, and you know me and my recycling addiction, right? I need, I need to somehow feel like my, my money is working for me. So I started scouring Craigslist, and... Of course, where I lived, there was nothing, okay? And so I started scouring Craigslist, how to, you know, Craigslist, the total, looking at the whole, I think it might even be called one Craigslist, I don't know, I can't remember. So I started looking for it, and there were all kinds of people selling all kinds of things. Now, of course, all of them say, I'm only going to buy... I'm only going to, I will not ship, and anyway, they all say that. I will not ship, only lo local only, da 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 So I found people that are selling like 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 dies for like $100, which is nothing when you consider that each die usually costs about $25. Now, keep in mind, you have to want the dies they're selling. You don't want to obviously buy just everything just because it's a die. So I emailed 
a few of them and I said, look, I know you said local only, but this is what it, would you consider shipping and flat rate shipping? Now you want anybody that's going to ship these dies to you, you want them to ship it to you in a flat rate box. Now they have this flat rate box that's called a flat rate game board box. And that is like, it's much bigger. It's the same price as a large flat rate box. So it's like 20 bucks roughly. But I think it's less than 20, but I can't remember, 18, 90 or something like that. Or I don't remember. And I know they might have gone up on them a little bit. They're big. They're quite large. And so they're bigger than the regular large flat rate box. And I said, well, would you consider, you know, mailing them to me? I said, I won't haggle with you on the price if you'll consider shipping them to me. And I had many people agree. So needless to say, I accumulated a large amount of dyes for very inexpensively. But you have to, you know, it's like something you have to do in order to find it. It's not like it's going to just jump out at you. And you do have to be willing to trust people. because, And if you do it with PayPal, you know, and you do it where they send you an invoice and you send it back, then you're both buyer-seller protected. Okay? That's my big Craigslist story. So I got a lot of cool dyes that I wouldn't have... First of all, some of them I, I didn't... wasn't really... they weren't really my style, but I've used them, and, I, and I've come to love them. Okay, so that's my Craigslist rant. So decide... Listen, you can make one of these out of any size envelope. Okay, so the one that I happen to have here, I think is four by six, is, uh, is it four by six, I think. And then this one's a little bit bigger. It doesn't really matter. Now, if you want to buy, if you want to make one of these covers or want to make one of these that fit a specific traveler's notebook insert, and you're not making your own traveler's notebook inserts, then you just need to do your measurements. Hi, Renette. So let's do I'll, let's do one paper napkin, and then we can do one something else. Okay. And what I've done, what I did last year for well, maybe it was you know guys my years run together, but my daughter that's 19, she when she was in high school she went to boarding school, and she had roommates. And so one year I made my version of a Midori, Fedori, any Dory <laughs> notebook out of envelopes for all of the girls in her dorm that she roomed with in her room. And they loved them and then they started making them for their friends and you know how that works out. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to, to talk to you guys about uh, in my world of paper napkin decoupage. Now please, all of you, hey Crystal, all of you pipe in in the chat and put in your own 411, okay, because, yeah, any dory, I don't think, you know, it's any dory, like just keep swimming, swimming, anyway, this is my version of paper napkin decoupage, you guys have your own versions, there's no right or wrong, it's whatever works for you, okay, whatever works for you. I feel that way about all crafting. That's just how I am. I feel like it's whatever works for you, but you can, you decide, you know? So I do have some cool napkins and somebody sent them to me and I love them and I'm all about it. Now you can use, I don't know where you girls get your napkins. Somebody, as I mentioned, somebody sent them to me. Um, the one thing I do want to, let me see if I have it. I thought I had left it really close by. I want to talk about how to take a napkin apart. Are you guys up for that? Anybody want to pipe in their 411? I use tape. Does it, what else do you guys use? I use tape to take my napkins apart. You can use whatever you have. Okay, whatever, whatever you have, please use whatever you have. I use tape. Sorry, I was looking for some stamp pads. I was going to show you guys some other stuff that I do, but of course, so I have had a better week than I had on to. It's got, my week has gotten better and weirder for all of you that know what's going on with me. <laughs> better and weird, better in some ways, weirder in others. It's just a little combo of all of the above. And 
I've just tried to stay positive. So that's sort of where I'm at right now. Just trying to focus on staying positive and, and not thinking about, um, I'm not thinking about anything else. What are you guys writing? Okay, let's see. Tuesday morning, right. Okay, tissue, pa tissue paper will work too. Yes, Luana, you can use tissue paper. What do you live, Diana? I'm missing what you live. What did you say? You can use tissue paper. You can use tissue paper. You can use napkins. You can use whatever you want. Okay, so if you have a napkin, tissue paper works great. I love tissue paper. Okay, so if you have a napkin and you want to take it apart. Hi, Cra Hi, Joyce. So all you do, this is what I do. Take a piece of masking tape and pull off a layer. Now, usually they have three layers, okay? They have the, the napkin, the, the pretty layer, and then they have the napkin, and then they have another one in between the printed part. And that's always the one that's a little bit more difficult to get off than, than, um, than the other. Now, you can use any kind of tape. I, this just happens to be whenever I'm using, it doesn't have a lot of sticky on it. Whenever I'm making, um, so can you guys see it? Can you see how it's coming apart? This is what works for me. I'm not telling you guys what to do, but that is what I do. Okay, now I save my layers of napkins, and I'm going to show you why. I shave, save my layers. This might be the one I'm going to use for one of them. I save my layers because I go back and I stamp on them. So, and you can use any kind of stamp. You do want to use a permanent, uh, I don't even know if this is permanent. You do want to use a permanent ink on them because if you don't, if you, I can't even tell if this is permanent. You guys, my eyesight's so bad I can't even see it. Um, because if you glue, if you use glue on top of it and it's not a permanent ink, what will happen is it will, it will run, okay? So you definitely want to use a permanent ink on your napkins or your white parts of your napkin and then you know go back and use it and stamp away you know all these all these pieces of napkin can then be used in anything I mean you can put glue them on top of your happy mail you can decoupage them on a card you can put them on your tags mixed media so I'm all about that, okay? I am all about stamping my napkin layers, okay? So I'm just letting you know, that's just, that's what I do. So you do, it if, that, if that's a tip that helps you, go for it. So I use it all. I try not to waste anything if I can help it. Now I'm not insisting that you save every little piece of every little thing. I'm just telling you what I do, especially if I'm going to use these napkins for crafts, you know. So, I'm going to show you guys my, 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 um, my version of the, now, you know what I may want to do, because this is, if I, only if I have it close by, if I have some white acrylic paint or some gesso, I will. Guys, I got over here with nothing. This is my life today. This is ridiculous. So, I may want to use some gesso. If you have the, if your napkin or whatever you're decoupaging underneath your, whatever you're, you're doing on top of this, you may want to consider putting some sort of like, white or beige or something or whatever color you want to see through your napkin okay if you don't want to see this yellow through your napkin you may want to consider here here's one called toasted marshmallow that's probably good enough um you may want to consider going ahead and painting the top of your you know painting your Oh my gosh, you guys, today is, I just, I've got to breathe, i got to breathe, i got to breathe, I can't even, 
It's like, uh, whatever. Gotta let it go. Got to let it go. So I did, as I was mentioning earlier, I went through my, I did go through my stuff. I, I can't find, I still can't find all my stuff. I love my daughter, but I can't find it all. And when I talked to her, she said, oh, I just put it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Not. Totally not. So, it's okay. It's on the shelf somewhere. It's on, it, it's on the shelf. So that's like super helpful, right? On the shelf. Now, if you guys have a jelly plate, use your jelly plate to, to if you want to, um, it, it'll be faster and you'll get a thinner coat of paint on your, on your envelope, but I don't have one in front of me. Hey, Sherry. So, now I'm not, you know what, give me a couple more weeks and I won't be stressed. I will have the big majority of the, what, that ridiculousness that I have shared with you done and I won't be stressed about anything. So what I do want to tell you is don't, if you're just going to put a coat of whatever to cover up the majority, now you know this is how, this is why I save all of those on my Happy Mail envelopes, even the padded ones. Have any of you guys made journals, junk journals out of those padded envelopes? Anybody besides me? So you don't want to have, you don't have to have a, a really thick coat of anything. I'm just trying because the napkins that I'm using, because the butterfly parts of the napkins are white, if I don't do it, the underneath is going to become, you're just going to see the yellow underneath. It'll, it'll, it'll come through. So you want to do super thin coat. So tell me what you guys have planned for the weekend. I want to hear all about your summer plans for the weekend. You know, it's always summer work, pretty much always summer where I live. So nobody's really like motivated to do, and it's also our busy season. So when you work outside, you know, when you work a job, it's like super busy. If you work a job, most of the jobs here are tourist industry related. So the summer people, we go on vacation like right after school starts, like September is usually slow here in September and May. Those are the slow times here. Okay, so the padded ones, Renette's asking like how you make a junk journal out of padded ones. Yes, I take, no, I don't even take the bubble part out. I use it, okay? I use the padded ones. I will, you guys give me a little bit more time. When I, I started, I started to re, clean up my daughter's organization. So I, you have to realize I took my craft space from a very, not a very large space, but larger than it is now. And I put everything up because my daughter moved back home and the room, and the room was too small with all my craft stuff in it. So I boxed up and I kept out like what I used. Well, I have, most of my crafting stuff is in like a little alcove, like, you know, like a dining alcove. And I do have shelves, but not every single thing can live on it because I had a much bigger space, right? And we're not talking about just paper crafting, you guys. I, I told you I've been a jeweler for a really long time, so I've got jewelry stuff, like heavy duty metaling, metal smithing stuff. And then I also sew, so I have like, fabric and quilting stuff so it's a lot so if you're gonna go ahead and prime it prime all of it so I'm missing what you guys are saying okay so Crystal says she lives in Texas and she rarely gets to take time off and, and her weekends are for Muscato and crafting awesome I haven't had Muscato in years Oh no, Renette! I'm wow. That, are you feeling okay? That is a bummer. You know, I had my wisdom. Speaking of oral surgery, I had my wisdom teeth out as an as an adult, like just a few years ago. Can I tell you guys? Oh my gosh, that was like the re most ridiculous thing ever. I was in so much pain, and I didn't. And I, of course, I had to work, and I didn't realize that I would be in so much pain because I have a high pain tolerance, but. 
I'm telling you, and I can't take any pain meds, so it was, let's just say, oral surgery, I get it, Renat. I totally get it. So go ahead and if you have gesso, use it. It doesn't really matter. If you just have plain, cheap, 50 cent white craft paint, which is what I'm using, you want to go ahead and get your, just put a thin coat on it. So if you don't want your cover to be, um, if you don't want your cover to be yellow. Okay, say so making one out of a pad of one. I will make one out of a pad of one. We could do that as a live stream too. Guys, just save it. Okay, save your. Um, I made it. I've made them a couple of different ways. I've made them where I've taken them to my sewing machine. Has anybody ever done that? Has anybody ever sewn the covers of these? I'm just trying to dry brush it, so that's why it. And um, this is not just so. This is cheap, cheap, super cheap. Fifty cent a bottle, satin finished. Toasted Marshmallow Apple Barrel Paint from a big box store. So, now I want you guys to know you can do the same technique in making a junk journal, okay, an envelope junk journal. You can cover it with paper, you can cover it with scrapbooking paper if you felt like it. You could cover it with our serendipity paper that you make. You could cover it with just about anything. So, I made them, I don't think there's anything that you can't make a junk journal out of. I've made them out of um, product boxes, all different kinds. I made a really cute small one out of a candy box. I loved it. And Now, if you're not going to ink the edges or just our... Um, Put your napkins over it. Definitely make sure you get the edges, okay? Because you've spent all this time putting a thin coat of covering. Just get your edges going. It, you can do this in stages. So say you had a bunch of envelopes. You guys have dollar stores there, so I know you can buy these envelopes for not a lot. Like a dollar for how many come in a, how many can you get? Can you get ten for a dollar? I mean, what's the package come like there? I don't know, but you can definitely get we don't have a dollar store where I am, so you can definitely get um, more for your buck you know, your your dollars there. So, make sure when you're doing this, even for a junk journal, that you get inside the envelope. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paint over the adhesive part. It's one of those stick and glue things. You don't have to. I mean, you can just glue your stuff over it, but I'm, just, I'm painting over all of it, okay? So, make sure when you're doing it that you, can you guys see that I painted just a little bit on, in the inside? Can you see it? Oh, Renette, it sounds horrible. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're going through that. You know, when I went and had my wisdom teeth out, the, the dentist here, the, um, the view was so beautiful. And it was just, the view is so beautiful, but I, I was just like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. And I told them when I went in, because I can't take any meds, you guys, my sense, my system is so sensitive I can't really take anything so I just said to them you know can you give me as little as possible because I can't I, I get sicker from the medication than the than the pain does that make sense so just make sure you let it dry for it doesn't have to dry to I mean if you put a thin enough coat on it should dry fairly quickly so anyway the doctor I don't know what they give you when they're and I had all of my wisdom teeth out at once okay all four of them and you know I'm wide awake or whatever and they give you they give you a shot of something like what Novocaine or something what did they give you I don't really know anyway he's like I am not gonna 
even though I said, please don't give me anything, he, they did anyway. And so, of course, my daughter drives me home. So this is the best part of it all. Okay, so later on that night, my phone rings. And the dentist did tell me when I was in the there that he was going to call me. He said, I'm going to call to make sure you're okay, that you're not having, like, you know, a reaction to the medication or whatever. Okay, but of course, I'm back home, and I'm in, by this point, I'm like, I'm looped out from like whatever they gave me, even though I said don't give me anything. I am looped out of my mind, and the dentist calls, okay? And I was watching on television with my kids some tennis thing, okay? I don't even remember what the tennis thing was, but one of my kids was into it. So I start having this looped out conversation with the dentist, asking him if he plays tennis, Okay? Later on, when I went back for my checkup, he was like, you're right, you can't take any of those medications. I was not I was like, do you play tennis? And I was, I guess, I, I don't know, I was like discussing tennis with him. It was ridiculous. So that's my, that's my story of, of, um, my teeth. And I was in pain forever. Yes, use your jelly plate and or or you can use a jelly plated jelly printed paint and cover anything. It doesn't matter. This just happens to be what I have. Okay, it doesn't matter. This is you could use serendipity paper, you could do anything. This is up to you and what you choose to do. Okay, so I'm not gonna use the border around this, this pink and orange border. I might use it on something else, but I'm not gonna use it on my my journal so so after I cover it with whatever and I wouldn't if you're if your napkins are dark you don't need to hey Kathy you guys I'm sure that this napkin either came from Tuesday morning or it came from I didn't buy it here I bought it guys I went to visit my family a year ago and so I made my sister take me to Tuesday morning and to Home Goods and those kind of stores because we don't have those here. So it probably came from Tuesday morning or some or someone gave it to me. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So I couldn't even tell you where I got it. It didn't come from here. Okay. It was just not going to be happening coming from here. So I may need two of these napkins. The thing is, is you want the cover of your journal to be really, you want, you want to like the cover of your journal. So you want, you don't want to skimp on it. Okay. Hopefully I have another one of those napkins. You don't want to skimp on the cover. Do not skimp on the cover. On the inside, it's not as important, but on the cover, it's more important. At least for my at least I think so. But what do I know? Hey, I have more. Party City has these. We don't even have a Party City. Okay? You guys have a I, we don't have anything like that here. Alright. So I'm gonna need a little bit more than one, I think, on my cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it by taking the layers apart. Yes, my family thinks I'm a little bit crazy, so I went to visit my sister, and I had to buy an extra suitcase, this is a year ago, I had to buy an extra suitcase coming back home because I had bought, I didn't even spend a lot of money, but I had bought all kinds of stuff from, you know, Tuesday morning and TJ Maxx, and I can't even tell you what, I, and most of it was craft-related stuff, I mean, most of it was um, stuff for, stuff for my, my paper crafting obsession. I did go to a fabric store and bought some fabric too. I'm not going to lie. I bought some fabric, paper crafting. What else did I buy? Bought some sheets, really nice sheets. Um, I bought some sheets. What else did I buy? Do you guys take for granted that you guys have all those things? We we have it. Some, well, we don't have these napkins, but 
you might get some sort of decorative napkins around the holidays, you know, like Christmas or stuff like that, but I, I'm not a big fan of that. Not, I'm not saying you couldn't do it for a journal, but it's like I'm not out there looking for Christmas napkins. You want to see me? Okay, we're not saying. <laughs> bring a bag. Nancy, I agree. You bring, I bring a ba extra bag. No, I haven't used your stuff yet. I haven't. You want to see me use the farmyard fabric. Okay, I haven't. You guys, sometimes when you send me stuff, I like to keep it. It's going to sound terrible, but I like to keep it the way it is and look at it and admire it for a while. But I will use it. I use everything. I don't, nothing goes to waste. All right, ready for my big technique. Okay, here we go. This is my big, my big na napkin decoupage. Okay, let me see what, let me read what you guys are saying. I don't hate you because you're living on the mainland, Luana. I love it. I'm just letting you know that if you ask me where I get it, I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay, so here is my watered down Aileen's glue because my Mod Podge is it's just too thick to deal with today. So this is what I this is Aileen's tacky glue, Mod Podge type, whatever. I added some water to it, and you can see it's on this. And I'm using a Home Depot gift card. Hopefully there wasn't any money on it. Okay. You definitely want to add, you, you don't need a super thick consistency, but you don't want to, when you're, this is what I, this is what works for me, but you guys use what works for you. Okay. When I'm doing paper napkin or any tissue paper decoupage, I like my glue not to be too, too thick and I don't like it to be too wet. Does that make sense? Not too thick and not too wet. My Mod Podge, if I showed you, okay, I have multiple bottles of Mod Podge, don't get me wrong, but the one that I use for this, or the one, put it this way, the one that's not in my stash in the garage, because I told you I moved all my stuff out and whatever, and half of it's in the garage, it was so thick that I was like, this is ridiculous. I couldn't, you know, so. So I'll show you the consistency. I don't even know if you can tell because it's on, I'm doing it on a, I'm doing it on this coffee lid but I like it and I had another credit card but I don't know where it is okay here it is I like it not I like it not too watery not too thick does that make sense not too watery not too thick this might be a little too thick still but I, I'll see in just a second So I just keep adding water until it gets to the consistency that I like it. And I add it with a, a paintbrush. I don't add it with, don't pour anything because I make it in small batches. So that way, if I get distracted or if somebody comes to my door or if I just don't finish the project, I haven't wasted a lot of it. So... I think this might be to a good consistency. I, there's still lumps in it, but it won't matter because trust me, it all works out in the end. Okay, so here's my big Mod Podge, my big thing. So I use a credit card, gift card, you could use a, a heavy piece of plastic. And I spread it as thin as possible and I do it over as much of the surface as I can. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll hold it up before I put the napkin on it. Okay. Spread it over the whole thing. Strings and stuff in my glue. I spread it over as much of the... And I go all the way to the edge. All the way. Now I'm working on my fake craft mat. You know, remember I told you guys I made a journal for a friend? For her son and it needed to have after I made the whole journal I read the thing where it said please make it waterproof or whatever and I was like oh my gosh so I used 
um, contact paper to cover the pages of the journal. So, you know, because I made it like a junk journal. And so my faux craft mat is the plat, is the, you know, the shiny side of the, um, shiny side of the contact paper. The shiny side of the thing that I took the contact paper off of. Okay, this is as thin as you can get it. Okay. And I make sure that I don't have any left. Alright, I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see? It has a kind of a sheen to it. Can you guys see how thin it is? I don't know if you can tell because I painted it white. Hi, Dawn! Okay. So it's just the thinnest possible layer of glue that you can have. Now, if you were gonna like deco, if you were gonna collage the whole thing and make it all different, because these butterflies are so random anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it down. All right, but you can do it any old way you want. Now, if you don't want any um, any lines in your piece, you may want to even consider ironing your napkins. I'm not that married to it because I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So do you see what I'm doing first? There's no more glue. I haven't done anything yet. I'm going to add my second piece. Now if you want to overlap it, you can. doesn't really matter. I'm just using my hand so far girls okay the one thing you have to be careful with is you know napkins are very fragile right so now here comes the very exciting part I'm gonna take the edge that doesn't have any glue on it yet and I'm gonna push from the center out all of my possible bubbles now you're never going to get a 100% smooth surface with a napkin, at least I haven't. Maybe you are if you do it another fancier way. I'm not that worried about it. Okay, do you see? Alright, now this is the tricky part, and this is the part you want to do. Go slow, start in the center, and just lightly start rubbing with your credit card or a brush, your glue on top. That is my big napkin decoupage secret okay go slow don't be in a hurry the faster you are you may be more likely to rip it from the center out okay putting a very thin layer very very thin layer of glue on top of your glue of your aliens or Mod Podge watered down. Is anybody else making with a napkin or tissue paper or is it just me? And you can't be in a hurry. You have to like go a little slower than say you would if you were, you know, like And the key is you don't have to get it all perfect the first time because you can do multiple layers and you may need to because you're going to need to ca cause a like a sealing factor to your to your glue to your glue to your watered down glue you're doing tissue paper Jennifer awesome so Save all your gift cards, girls, even after they aren't good anymore. They make the best blue spreaders. You know, gift cards and... Hey, Nancy. I like using napkins, too. Now, you can do the same technique if you're going to put it on, like, a regular envelope. If you're going to put it on a food packaging or anything like that, that you're going to use, like, say you're going to make tags or components for your embellishments, so you can do it the same way. You know, you do want to put this on a non-stick surface, whether it's my, whether it's your faux craft mat or your, or your, um, 
for your craft mat. I'm sorry, I was just picking it up, you guys. Um, you do want to go ahead and put it on a non-stick surface because it will stick otherwise, and that's not fun. You know, you know what I like about the napkin thing is that, you know, you can you can you can get a whole bunch of different colors and different things that you wouldn't be able to get in a maybe in a scrapbooking paper. But even more so than that, you can, um, you know, it doesn't add bulk to anything that you're doing. It's not going to be a bulky, a bulky style use. Sorry guys, I got so much glue on my brush because I was putting some water in it trying to mix it up from my... So you can make yours in bigger batches than I do, but I find this is what works best for me, okay? This is where I get the best results. And I'm ha this is where I'm the happiest with my results. I'm not, you know, maybe maybe some of you get better results than I do, but um, I'm much happier with the results I get mixing smaller batches of glue than if I make a whole lot, end up wasting it, or make a whole lot and it dries out before I can use it. So, you know. So the center out to the edge, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and if you rip your napkin, so what, you can go back and do some stamping, or some painting, or spraying, or whatever to cover up. And as you're using your credit card, if you have one, or your whatever you're using that's like thick like this, or um, you know, just make sure you're not leaving puddles of glue. I'm not even able to see what you girls are talking about. I'm too in my glue world. What are you talking about? Oh, the one you sent me, you did napkins on, Renette? You know, I don't have it close by. I can't look at it, but because I have it in my... moved all my prized journals into my bedroom from my little dining alcove because I could look at them. I could... <laughs> it's like so silly. My kids call it my trip, my treasure shelf, because I have all the things I love on it, and a lot, every journal that you guys have sent me, I have on it too. Okay, so you can see, I'm gonna eventually end up cutting off the napkin that I don't, the part of the napkin that's I don't need, but I haven't done it yet. Okay, eventually I'll cut off the napkin because I'll do something else on the other side. Maybe I'll paint the other side. I don't know. What are you guys talking about saving and missing it? I can't I can't see it at the same time. Militia says sometimes she gets cards in the mail. Um, and you cut them in you cut them on the edge, the edge on a zigzag or a shape. And to use for texture, great. That's a great tip. I've done it with cardboard. I guess I don't get so many of these cards, so I keep them sort of sort of sacred or whatever, but I think that's a great, great, great tip great tip so if you're sharing a tip with you guys cut your take your plastic gift cards or used credit cards or whatever they are and cut them with special scissors scissors or cut them in a pattern so that you can then use them as texture use them for like when you're using texture paste or probably could use them on your jelly plate too right I guess if that if the edges aren't too um, aren't too Okay, this is the thinnest layer of glue possible, girls, and I have got it on my hands. The thinnest layer of glue possible. You're covering yours in scrapbook paper. Good, Dawn, cover in scrapbook paper. I love that, you know. This would be good, Renee, for Pen Pal Mal. You're absolutely right. You know, you're absolutely right. Okay, I'm going to let it sit for a couple minutes. The one thing you want to do when you're making these envelopes, though, especially at this stage, you want to stick your hand inside of it to make sure. Because if you get it too wet, you can get it stuck inside. So you want to make sure that it's not stuck inside. This may need another layer of glue on it. I don't know, but I'm going to cut off some of the excess right now while, while I'm sitting here with you guys. I'm going to cut off some of the pieces that I don't need. 
of the overhang. I may, need it, may leave a tiny bit and cut it off in a few more minutes. That is what's going on with me. So tell me what you girls are up to. Tell me like what's going on. I, you know, I feel like everybody, I keep getting these like posts from my friends saying, oh, and I'm traveling here and I'm doing that. You know, honestly, I, would, I, I wish I was going to, I don't, I, I know I just got back from a trip, but I wish I was, I wish I could say I was going to go on some road trip, but really there's no place to go. I mean, I can go, I can island hop to another island. The closest place to here is like, as far as like inland is, is like LA. Portland, LA. Maybe I'll come to Portland and see you, Ash. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a road trip to, maybe we'll take a, little flight over to Portland. So. Okay, so we're not saying that she saves the part that has been decoupaged that in test or cut off and reuse it in your journal. Yes, I save all of it. I don't, I don't discarded. I'm just cutting it off now. I definitely need to do the edges of here. Do the edges of the um, of the journal again with the glue. <laughs> don't come on. Don't, Ash is saying I can come to Portland and visit her just so we can craft together. You get a date. Pop, absolutely. But she says don't come this weekend because it's going to be 100 degrees. It has been really hot here. Renee, you're off from teaching the whole summer? Woohoo! No, right? Isn't that the best part about being a, a teacher sometimes, right? Vacation, vacation, vacation. My dad was a teacher, and that's what he used to say. He used to say the best part. You know, he was a really amazing. He was a math professor, but he said the best part of teaching sometimes is summer. And I always appreciated him being around, so. So it needs to dry a little bit longer. But do you see, it's not, I mean, the texture is pretty good. As far as, like, sometimes you can get, it can get super wrinkly. I don't know how much can you guys see. It has been so, it's hot here, but it's, for whatever reason, it's overcast. So it's a little dark here. Portland's only three hours from you, Renette? Oh, my gosh. I agree with you, Ash. Ash says the reason why summers are great for teachers is because teaching is difficult. It's so difficult, which is true. And they work long hours during the school year. Yes. And you have to deal with other people's kids. <laughs> okay. I'm going to just take my glue. It's, it's pretty, it's still tacky, but I'm going to do my, take my, I'm going to take my credit card with my glue water mixture. I may have to make one more round of it, which I thought I didn't, but I may have to. And I'm going to do the edges because the edges need it. The edges need it. Now keep in mind, you guys, it doesn't matter if you have, you know, if you make a bunch of these in a, you know, like sort of in an assembly line where you're just like making, like one day you just, you know, make all covers. Or you can be like me and do it like, I do it over television series. Like, I think I'll watch, like, a season of something, and I'll say, okay, during this season, because I watch it, like, on Netflix or, or Hulu or one of those things. So, say for, so for this season, I'm going to do this. And then for this season, I'm going to do, you know, I know it's all you guys. So, I've been helping this friend of mine. She is moving from Maui back to Oahu. She's, and she's lived here on Maui 40 years, but her mom is not well. And so she needs to go and take care of her mom. And her mom is quite, I'm gonna say her mom's like, I don't know, she must be in her 80s, maybe even older. I don't, I can't actually remember. Anyway, 
So we've been helping her with her with her yard sale and you know trying to she's not gonna sell her house but she doesn't you know she wants to rent it out and she's letting go of stuff and she's so funny like now because she knows I make recycled art before she throws anything out she's like can you use this <laughs> and I'm like oh but you'd be proud of me I'm like no give it away to somebody else give it away because I myself am trying to let go of some of the stuff I have too not my books and stuff but you know how you get stuff that you never use like somebody will give it to you and you've had it for a really long time and you just know that somebody else will love it I've been trying to do that goes for my stuff so all week I've been on top of my own regularness and my own life I've been trying to help her which has been great because you know anytime you can help somebody you love and moving can be so stressful and getting rid of your stuff can be stressful too you think am I ever going to need it again does that happen to anybody else besides me does that ever happen to anybody you know why the napkin's not tearing, Renee? The napkin's not tearing because I put... That's why I'm telling you. It's my, my, my secret. <laughs> my, my technique or whatever. My, what I figured out worked best for me. It's the thin, thin, thin layer of glue. I'm telling you. It's that. And it's because what I did first was I put the, the thin layer of glue down with that credit card or my gift card or whatever. I put that down first and then I... Kept, you keep taking up, you just keep, you know, taking a little more and more and more and more of it off until there really isn't anything there. And then you put your napkin down. And then you do the same, and then you, then you burnish it down with your, with your card, the, the end that doesn't have any glue on it. And the center out, center out is the idea, girls, gets all the bubbles out. And then... Now this works better if you just leave it and let it totally dry because it'll get really hard and it makes it easier to cut it off. But I was trying to rush it so that we could do the back together. But it's almost completely dry. That's your life right now? Will you ever need it again? Okay, so let me tell you guys a funny story. So I used to own my own art gallery when I lived on the mainland. I had lots of paintings and jewelry, not just mine, but other artists, and I loved it, guys. I have to say it was probably, of all the things I've done in my life, one of the most favorite things I ever did. The problem was, the problem was, I couldn't, because I was working so much with the gallery, keeping the gallery open, couldn't didn't have time to make my own art. It was like, you know, initially I made a whole bunch of art for the gallery, made my own jewelry and stuff for the gallery, but then I was open. The gallery was open all the time, and I didn't have time to make art. So that, that was the only downfall. Anyway. So I had really nice clothes. Like, very, very, very nice clothes. And when I moved here to... Well, I didn't... When I left the mainland, I didn't take a lot of stuff with me. But I did bring some of my nice clothes. Well, I got here, and it's so hot, you guys. It's like... But I'm talking about really nice clothes, like suits you'll never buy again. And, you know, I lived in New York, so it was like nice, really nice clothes. So, I don't know, maybe after I lived here for, I don't know, a year or so, maybe longer, I let them all go. When my daughters came to visit me, she was off at college, and at the time she was going back home to visit a friend in San Francisco, and I said, can you take all these, can you take a suitcase full of clothes? And can you take it? You can have whatever money you get from it if you want to take it to a consignment store. So I let everything go. Everything. Everything. Hi, Laurel. I let everything. Maybe I kept a jacket. I don't know. Maybe two jackets. But we're talking like, I think it was like two enormous suitcases. Probably like 30 suits. And then, after all that, maybe three months later, I got a job where I needed them. I got offered a job and I needed I needed that kind of clothes. Hi, Heidi. So that is the story of my life. 
So I let it go, and then I need it. So, but now I'm just trying to like let it go no matter what. So, I guess that's one way to know that I'll get a job, right? If I wanted a job was like a, a another job like that is to get rid of all my clothes. Same thing happens with moved dishes, okay? So, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, it's so ridiculous. So the same thing happens with dishes. So when I moved here, I obviously did not bring my dishes. And I kind of, I don't know if, they, if a friend gave me a set of dishes or something. They were sort of mismatched and not nice or not my style, put it that way. So finally, I decided... I was going to buy myself a set of dishes, a really nice set of dishes, and then I moved. Same thing happened to me when I lived in New York, so I always wanted, my gosh, I think about it now, it happens every time I need to, I move. I always wanted a set of Italian dishes and I went to Italy, bought myself dishes, and then after I bought myself dishes, we moved. I did not bring those Italian dishes with me. So then I went to, so then I had a house in upstate New York, as well as a little apartment in New York City, and um, <laughs> I bought myself a set of new dishes, and then I moved here. And then I bought myself a set of new dishes when I lived here, and I moved back, I moved to Las Vegas for just about a minute. For my a job transfer, but my family hated it, so I'm back here. Needless to say, I don't have any new dishes. I just when I came back, a friend of mine gave me all of her like mismatched, mix, mismatched dish, dishes, and that's what I've had. I haven't even ventured to buy myself any new ones. Okay, it's almost totally dry. Okay, it didn't. It didn't. If you make it like this and you do it in a um, assembly line. For journal covers or anything else, you can just, I would totally let it dry. Somebody else asked me this recently in one of the questions. So when you use Mod Podge, sometimes when you use Mod, when you Mod Podge a cover or when you Mod Podge anything that's with a lot collaging or whatever, that it gets sticky. And if you send it in the mail and in it, um, you know, the mail, the, I guess the temperature change from where you're sending it to where you live, it could also stick together. Okay, the remedy that I found for that, now this is Aliens Tacky Glue, so I don't think it's going to stick together, but it could. But the remedy that I found that works for that is either putting some cornstarch on top or um, baby powder. So that's my that's my big tip for the day, cornstarch baby powder. Okay, so this is the front cover of the journal. Now, we definitely need to, before we, we can paint the inside, stamp the inside, you know, you can, you can decide what you want to do. The, I'm sorry, Heidi, this is an envelope. This is a, a you know, the, this kind of envelope, this. This one, just, these don't have the, the brads on them, but this kind. It works every time, Militia. The baby powder or cornstarch thing works every time. Every single time. You know, and I live in a place where it does get really hot, so things can stick together. And you can still put it on, like, even if you don't think you need it, you can still take a dry paintbrush or an old makeup brush and brush it over the whole thing. Okay? The powder works. Okay, Ash is saying she res, res, rubs beeswax or shea butter for the stickiness. Hey, that's awesome. Um, I just didn't have any beeswax or shea butter. <laughs> and I also didn't know about that. Okay, so the next step is to, this is still a little bit tacky. Okay, now can you see, even though I faux paint, I mean, even though I whitewashed it, you can still see the yellow. So maybe I should have done another layer of, of paint. But if you're going to paint the envelope, can you see the yellow? Is it just my eyes? 
You can see it in the center here. I can see it on the edge. So you may want to paint it twice, but if you do, do it a really dry, do a dry brush and let it sit. Because realize that just because this is an envelope, it's not that, I mean, it's still paper and you can make it really mushy. Does that make sense? So, I mean, not that it matters, but I'm just saying if it matters to you. I mean, this is just going to be like a little journal that I don't even know what I'm going to do with it afterwards. I mean, keep it. going to give them, my daughter asked me to make a few more. Honestly, I don't remember what I made or other friends, so I don't want to make them the same thing, so she's enough to give me some 411. Okay, so we need to decide what I'm going to do on the other side. Okay, what I did on the other side of this one is I did my sort of serendipity paper. You know my version of or collaging or whatever you want to call it now I didn't glue this on and this one needs to be re, needs to be glued down more I didn't I glued this on with a glue stick I didn't glue it on with um, wet glue I glued it on with a permanent glue stick okay now obviously I didn't glue it down well because I have some bits coming up I didn't glue it all the way down so this is a great place. Somebody, I was having a conversation with one of my friends today about what do you do with brittle book pages? Does it, do any of you guys collect books that possibly have brittle book pages? Now I'm just using the dry end of my credit card to just burnish down the ends of my book pages. It, it's not, it's not that mandatory. I was kind of thinking I might paint on the inside of it, but I don't know. I haven't I haven't decided, you know, to cover up some of the, these are all just random text pages that I had. <laughs> Joyce is saying, um, so, so Renee, the first thing I know, Renee, for those of you that, that don't know, go over to her YouTube channel. It's called GT Designs and Vintage Art Supplies. And she uh, makes amazing kits and sells amazing junk journal kits and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. And she has an Etsy shop. You can go check it out. So the first thing I would do if I was you, Renee, is I would uh, scan those 1800 music sheets, the, 18, the music sheets that are from the 1800s, I would scan them so that you have PDFs of them because you could print them out and use them. But this works really great for fragile book pages, okay? So let me see if I have some close by. Remember, you guys, I told you I took apart all those Reader's Digests. That I love the covers of them, but the pages themselves are like... They're just not good for anything. Like, you can't really put them in a junk journal. You can't... I had a whole pile of them and then See, this is what I get for cleaning up my mess. Um, you can't really put them in a junk journal, and you can't really... Um, you can't really use them. They're just not... They're just not workable. What are you covering your eyes? Okay, what am I missing, you guys? I'm missing it all. <laughs> Hi, Scotty. Oh my gosh, Scotty writes random porn papers. I love you. You guys, that, that would happen to me. Okay, can we not even... You guys know my racy book tale. My, my racy book story. My porn story there. Okay, I don't have any in front of me. I thought I, had a, I, thought I saved a stack because I was going to talk about it. But obviously, it, only, it didn't save them where I can find them close by. Wait, let me save this the pile here. Um, so when you get these, and I love the, I love the, uh, the Reader's Digest covers, those really pretty covers, but the papers, the pages are so brittle, okay, they're so, so brittle. You're not making anyone scandalized, Scotty. You know what, we're, we're big girls, we can handle it. So, I mean, you can't use it as a junk journal, because, like, look, the moment you start, like, Look how fat, I mean, it, it just is nothing. It's like gonna, this is from, this is the images from the inside of a Reader's Digest, the, of an old Reader's Digest. So I use them, I think there's a couple pieces in here. These work great. This works great. So if you want to make your serendipity paper or your one-of-a-kind paper, you can make it and then cover your journal with it. 
or you can glue it right on. So you now sometimes it's good to make it in a really big sheet, but I just decoupaged all this on. Okay. So do you need to decide what you're going to put on the inside cover. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and put, and you can tell it's sticking to the table because I got glue on my table. Um, if you wanted to, and I didn't put any baby powder on it yet. If you wanted to put your, whatever you're going to do on the inside, do it now. Don't do it later. This is like either paint it, stamp it, decoupage it. Um, I mean, what are you girls thinking? Paint, stamp, decoupage? I mean, so I don't know what I have. This one I just did old book pages on. Start doing your inside cover, and while you do it, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to put on the inside of this one, and then maybe we'll do our, our, um, you guys, I'm having a brain moment. I am having a brain lapse. We'll do our, the next step after that. And for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, the Reader's Digest, I'm talking about these type of reader, Reader's Digest condensed volume. You may have to use a hair dryer, Luana. You know, the thing is, is that decoupage and stamp, yeah. So, you may have to use um, a hair dryer. I, you know, you may have to. So, these are those Reader's Digest condensed volumes that I was talking about where the pages are not, um, it will not kill a hair drying it. You know, I could probably use to use my heat gun on this too to dry it 100%, but I, did, I haven't, okay? And then I laid it down on my glued table and it's gotten, I have all kinds of stuff on this thing. I didn't wipe it off. I'm not a good crafter. I didn't wipe, wipe off my, my non-stick surface. So then take the time to go ahead and do it. Um, I could paint the inside cover. Let me see if I can find a piece of wax paper. Can you guys hear my baby dog crying? I made my daughter... My littlest, my youngest daughter put her in the other room because she, oh my gosh, you guys, all she wants to do is sit on my lap and that doesn't quite work when you're trying to live stream. And she doesn't seem to understand that. Like, I keep talking to her about it and saying, okay, I love you, but you can't sit on me, but that just doesn't work. She wants to sit on top of me and now she's crying and I can just hear her crying. Okay, I'm going to look for a piece of wax paper because I want to put a piece of wax paper down on this so it doesn't stick because I've gotten glue stuff on my, well, I have them close by, but I don't. Okay, the other thing is, is use your, you can also use your, um, you know how we were talking about the painted papers? This would also be a great way to, you could decoupage with your painted papers. Okay, Luana's saying she has a dog. What did you say? Super? So, you have a dog that would sit on your lap, too? Thanks, Solana. You're so sweet. You know, a hair dryer and a heat gun, they work. Both work great. So, use it. And don't be afraid to, um, to use it. You know, I can't super clean craft. I aspire to sometimes, but you guys, I can't. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I cannot super clean craft. Okay, maybe... And, and I admire those that can super clean craft, okay? I admire those of you that can super clean craft. It just doesn't happen for me. Have the best of intentions, it just does not happen for me. No super clean crafting for me. So I save all this stuff, you guys. I probably have don't need to save all of it, but I save all of it, and I have it on my table or near me. I was just looking for... I cleaned off my table today, and I just moved stuff away, and just looking for a piece of... Where I don't, I'm gonna have to get one. What I may do is I may spray ink it. I'm thinking I might, I'm thinking I might, you know me and my love for these spray inks. I'm thinking I might paint a little bit more on it. And then maybe I'll just spray ink it with my, with those new spray inks that I got that I'm kind of like totally obsessed with. And for those of you that haven't been watching, I got these crazy spray inks that I like totally love. And, okay, I found some wax paper bags. So if any of you guys go to the grocery store, they sell these wax paper sandwich bags. They're probably, I think they're a box of 100 for like 
$2. And they work great. And I saw them in my junk journals. So I might do... I'm definitely going to need to paint over this a little bit more because that is like a little... Hmm. Input girls. I'd love some input. If anybody has any right now, I would love that. It's a blue brush. So I'm in love with these spray things, okay? I don't know what they're called, but I'll show them to you in a second. They're called... They're called this, Lindy's Stardust Sprays. And I kind of like them. I love all those um, Tattered Angel sprays too. Do you guys like those? Are you guys still talking about clean crafting? You guys, one of these days I'll give you guys a <laughs> whole, told you I would give you a tour of my tiny craft space. Oh my God, right now it's really horrible. It's like the worst it's been in I don't know how long. Okay, I'm just going to, because this has some adhesive on it, i got to just paint over it a little bit more. I might have to cover the inside of the envelope part with something. We'll see. Because it is still adhesive-y. I may find some paper and do that. And cover it up. Maybe I'll cover it. Or I could go back and cover it with... So I like these Lindy sprays. Now this I used my die cutting machine and I made... I cut some flowers out of something and then... And I, um... I kept it as a stencil. Now if you really wanted it to work for a really long time... What you would do is you would, if you wanted it to, if you wanted to, if you want to keep it pristine or keep it working as it, like say, say you have a friend that has a die cutting machine and you don't have one, and you want to keep using the same thing over and over again, you would take Mod Podge or Aliens Tacky Glue or something and you would coat it, and then it'll you it'll stay. Um, I like the I like these. I don't know you guys. I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, whenever I bought them. So, I told you guys about my stocking obsession with Dee Dee Willingham. You guys know how much I love her and think she's awesome. And I love her, her shows and her channel and all that stuff, right? And she, she, she has a YouTube channel called Dee Dee Willingham. And then she has um, a Ustream channel called Inkwell. And she talks about these things called magicals and they're this um, powder I don't know what is it you guys what are they called they're like they're like a powder I don't have them in there over here anyway they're what's super cool about them is, is they're water soluble and water based and you can use water on them but then after you use water on them if you go back and you after they dry they become waterproof, these magicals. So, I don't know, one of you guys told me that I should, or somebody told me they were having a sale on them. Was it you, Diana? Somebody told me they were having a sale on them, on creating craft. And since I'm not always on those things, I don't know anything. So, I um, went on creative craft and I bought some magicals and I bought these sprays. They're also part of that whole magicals thing by Lindy Stamp Game. And they're normally expensive. Like I think they're normally like, can somebody tell me are they like $20 or something for, they're like between $17 and $20. <coughs> Creative Craft had them for five. So I bought the set of five for $5. And I bought the Magicals for also $5. And I haven't really had a chance to use all of them yet, but I'm going to. I just haven't. So that's what these sprays are. And I'm, and I'm liking them a lot. And I've used them in some... made some tags and I made some all kinds of stuff with them. And I'm using them and so I'm liking them. So that's what I'm going to cover mine with. And I'm doing my own version of it, so I'm probably doing it wrong. You're doing it, you're going back to your hair dryer. Ashes are between $17 and $20. Okay. 
Dee Dee did a studio tour today. You know what? I didn't watch today, you guys. I have been... You know, I hate talking about my personal stuff. So I've just been in my own, like, had conference calls and ridiculousness. And because of the time difference, it has not... I didn't, I didn't stay up and watch her. Usually, I, I mean, you guys saw I posted it the other day. I was stalking at what time? I mean, she starts, sh she starts filming it like it's like four o'clock in the morning my time. So. Anyway, so. I don't know if Create and Craft still has them for five dollars, but if they do, it's worth. It, yeah, Ash, what was the few things are free shipping here, but it might be free to you. But I, I always like something like that if I can get a chance to try it. So she loves using these, so. Did you guys watch her the other day, remember? Because I just remember buying the, paying the $5 and, or buying the couple of sets of them for $5 and I don't remember what the shipping was here. It might, it may be even free to you guys. Very few. Well, she does this beautiful, she uses all kinds of markers and stuff, and what I appreciate about her, she shares all of her, she shares all of her knowledge with you, you know, like, you can learn so much just from her, just from watching her. There was no free shipping, so, nothing's ever free here, okay, so as far as shipping goes, very few places ship for free. So I'm just gonna, gonna do a little bit of more of this on my my envelope. I may I may add some decoupage stuff to it, but you guys do yours any way you want. If you if you have made have any of you guys made spray inks, spray acrylic inks, or spray um, alcohol inks, is any, have any of you done that? Yeah, but I, I think I figured out by the time I bought mine that it was cheaper. Even even with uh, even with shipping, it was cheaper than if I bought them otherwise. Does that make sense? So so what was Dee Dee's studio tour? Was it like so amazing? Like were you just like? Does she have like a heavenly studio? She's done one a while ago, and I thought it was really good too then, but I honestly, I can't remember now. Was it, was it heavenly? Jennifer uses bingo markers, which I think is a brilliant idea. If you can get bingo markers, and she makes her own sprays from bingo markers, share with everybody, Jen, how you make them. Share how you make them in your, um... With bingo markers. I don't even know what I'm doing, Ash. I was just thinking that I like the butterflies on that side, and sometimes on the inside it can get a little busy. So that's all I was thinking. You made alcohol inks. I love, you know, I'm kind of obsessed with them. I don't know why, but I just really like them a lot. I like the alcohol inks. I could, I, I, it's like a fun think it's like a fun thing you know yeah you can make them out of Easter I did buy some Easter egg dye and have made them out of Easter egg dye and I've made them out of um hey Linda what did you say the real I'm gonna say that you guys are typing faster than I can read it or it's scrolling up fast on my thing Okay, Scotty's saying that <laughs> that the studio tour, the studio is so clean and organized that you need help. Well, hopefully you'll be feeling better, and hopefully you know you'll you clean it. You know you have to work in the space that works for you. Not all of us can. Not all of us need a beautiful, clean space to work in. Some of us like our chaos. I think I function better in my chaos. That's why I can't find my stuff. That's why I've like haven't been able to find it since my sweet daughter, who was doing me a favor because I was gone, was doing my 
helping me out by cleaning out some stuff, but I can't find my stuff now. So... So I am all about working, working how it works for you because we're all so different and we all have different styles and what works for one of us may not work for the other. So it's like super awesome if you, if you just live in your zen. I am, I am definitely purging some stuff though. I'm like going through and purging and so all the neighborhood kids came over to my house yesterday early in the day because you know it's summer and they don't know so they just show up at your door and it gets daylight pretty early here because school usually starts pretty early most of them are used to being up super early so they just all show up and they want <laughs> they want to do stuff and they know that I craft so they're always like can we come craft and I'm like seven in the morning I'm not feeling it but it's so funny so they all came yesterday and then they all decided that they needed to go to the to our local swimming pool. We have a lot of swimming pools here that where you can just go for free. And so one of their mothers called me and said, you know, can your daughter come? And then she's like, next thing you know, I'm like, okay, so give me a few minutes. And so I'm trying to get myself together so we can all go to the pool. Next thing I, I turn around and there's like, like eight children in my living room under the age of 12 like discussing crafting techniques and you know, they're like we need to come over and oh and I want to try that and it, it was just very sweet guys so needless to say we get we, so the whole story is we get all of our stuff together to go to the pool because they're all they all want to go to the pool and we're kind of excited about they're excited about going to the pool and so we get all the stuff to go to the pool and we get there are too many of them to fit in the car, so I take half of them down to the end of the block because we live kind of up a steep area. I take them up to the top of the, the hill, and I come back for the second half, and I leave my friend, the, my you know, the other adult that's going at the top of the hill with the kids, and come back and get all the rest of them that are in my living room to go, and then we... You know, I drive them all up there, and then I said, I'm going to drive ahead of you guys because they wanted to walk. Because they think it's really fun to, like, walk there, which, whatever. You know, when you're a kid, you think all that sort of stuff's going on all the time. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I get all of the kids. I get all, they all are there, and they all, you know, and I get all the way to the pool, which is, and they're almost there. I mean, it's a, kind of a walk, you know? And you guys, this is how it works where I live. So somebody just didn't show up for work. So the pool wasn't open. It said, it said, due to, there was a note on the door, due to lack of staff, we had to close early. It's like so typical of things here. And I was just like, oh no. So the kids were like so devastated. They were like, <laughs> they were, so yesterday we crafted. So they had a good day. They were devastated. They were like, why? Why wouldn't they come to work? This is the coolest job, you know. Anyway, but that's just sort of island life, guys. It's sort of island life. Okay, I'm kind of liking this. What are you guys thinking? It might need a little more, but I'm kind of liking it. All right, what are you girls talking about? I'm missing it all. I am missing it. So Lorel says she's been busy getting ready for a huge garage sale. Awesome. Good for you. Good for you. I was I'm helping a friend with her garage sale. So that has entitled that has been like me going over to her house and helping her sort through her stuff. I haven't actually been there on the days of the garage sale, but I've been like doing the back end of it and then posting stuff online for her. Do you guys have virtual garage sale sites where you guys are, or is that something that's just popular here? We have like virtual garage sales, so like you can, it's like sort of like a Craigslist, but it's, um, but it's online and you can post, 
you can post like what you're selling and if you want to sell it before the garage sale or your yard sale people can buy it from you or they can come around on the day you're having it oh now i'm gonna I'm definitely all right joyce now you convinced me i'm definitely gonna have to watch that video but then it's gonna make me am i gonna have studio envy you guys am i gonna then like not want to do my own studio tour visit so when you guys see mine you're gonna go i am definitely not jealous of her <laughs> I am definitely not jealous of her. She, her studio is small. And her stuff is not organized the way I would organize it. Okay, I'm kind of liking it. So how far along are you guys with what you're doing? Anybody want to let me know? Okay, now my hands are completely... Completely, um... Completely inked up. But that's okay my hands. This is what it always looks like. Alright, I may want to do something ink around the edges too, but I don't know. I'm thinking I'm liking it like this so far. I don't know. I might put some paper on the inside. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so let me move my fake stencils, my faux stencils, and my paper, and talk about the pages. So these are ones that I made, I cut out of the die cutting machine, and I still keep them. I mean, I may use them for other things at times, but I still keep them. They'd be great in your serendipity paper, stuff like that. Michelle's making book spines, awesome. Well, the one will let it dry. You don't, the, the thing is, is you don't, this is the whole part, is that you want to let things dry thoroughly. You don't want to get so excited or to the end where you don't, you don't, it ends up running. Dawn says she's working on the cover inside of the envelope. The glue is everywhere, yep. <laughs> Laurel, you're just watching, hey. So, let me just talk to you a little bit about pages, okay? So, a regular traveler's notebook is generally used as, like, that blank pages. But you can also use the same technique for a junk journal if you wanted to, okay? So, the thing is, you have to decide. Now, this is where you need your elastic if, if you have elastic. Um... If you get really skinny hair ties, they'll go over this. Of course, today when I went to look for my hair ties, I could not find them. Because I cut all my hair off, so I don't have them, so only my daughter uses them. So I couldn't find the hair ties. And I couldn't find my elastic. So I had thick elastic, but I couldn't find the skinny elastic. Now, you have to buy the skinny elastic online, I think. I don't know if you can even buy it. Can, I, can you buy 2 millimeter elastic? Does anyone know? Can you buy it... Um, Can you buy it in a fabric store where you guys are? You can't buy it in a big box store where I am, but if you have a proper, like, Joann's or fabric store, you can buy it there. Now, you could use thicker elastic, but 2 millimeter elastic is that really thin elastic. I think Ash talked about it's probably the same size of the elastic in the book that you sent me. You know what I'm talking, um, the book that, um, Rose sent me, which is, I guess I can't remember, what did she call that elastic, you guys? It had, like, it has, like, things on the end. Or, you know, like, when you buy a set of greeting cards in a, in a, in, in a store, how they'll have a, uh, sometimes they'll have, like, an elastic around it? It's that size. And so... That, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do the holes in it. But, I'm sorry guys, I'm missing all your words. Um, but I'm going to use string with mine because that's what I have. And I'm not telling you, I told you to get your own elastic. And then, when I realized I didn't have any elastic, I couldn't even go get any. Because you can't get it here. Like, I can't, I couldn't even run down to the store and buy some. The next time I'll find... 
hopefully I'll be done cleaning up my space and I'll find my box of elastic because I have a lot of it because I bought it online but I couldn't find it today. So I'm using cord. This is this is what I'm using. I'm using braiding cord. Um, I don't know if it's hemp or something. I have some hemp cord too. Okay. All right. What am I missing? Okay, you, you, Heidi says her daughter swipes all the hair pin, hair ties and bobby pins. So you use ribbon to tie yours. Okay, it's not really about the tying. The, the, I mean, yes, you can use ribbon. You can use anything. I do have a distress ink. I do have somewhere I have a distress ink. I have one of these, yes. And you could definitely go around the edges with the distress ink. I have vintage photo, which is my favorite distress ink to you guys like Tim Holtz Distress Inks. They're pretty awesome. Has any, have any of you done his like cruise, his, his crafting cruise? So yes, you can do, you could, you could distress all the edges. You could totally distress the edges. So you want the round elastic cord, okay? That's what I think works best, but you know what? I'm not married to it. You can use whatever you have, okay? The idea with one of these Midori, Fedori style, any Dory style notebook is you want to be able to take your inserts in and out. And you know, You can, now that I'm using this distress ink, I've got it all over me too. So you can decide what works best for you, okay? And there's a couple of different ways to sew them. I'm missing what you guys are saying. I don't, hey Heidi, don't feel alone. I don't have a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby either, so... You know, join our, our little Facebook group, and I'm certainly sure if one of those ladies in there has extra, somebody would happily send it to you, um, just so you can try it out. Can you buy, can you order it online, you guys? I haven't even tried. I, I mean, I, I haven't, I try. I bought it mine from Amazon online. I haven't tried, I don't know if Michael's are, some, this is what I find when I try to buy stuff from Michael's and that sort of thing online. And you guys can correct me if you have a different experience. What I find when I try to buy stuff from Michaels or Joann's online, whatever I'm looking for, they don't have. Does that make sense? Like, they didn't, they don't have it, and so I don't even try anymore. So I ordered mine from Amazon because I they ship for free, and I could later on I could show you the link where I ordered from. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this. So one of them is you can. You, you you poke a hole in the center for your tie, right? Poke a hole in the center of your, of your Midori Fedori for your tie. And if you have elastic, you're gonna just make a big loop and then when you close it like this and like this, it's gonna hold your, your piece shut, okay? Yes, Tim Holtz does have like some scrapbooking cruise. Somebody was telling me about it. I you know, after they told me about it, it makes me think about it. <laughs> it's terrible. Like we all need anything else to think about. Okay, so you can put your holes like you can do your holes straight up and down if you wanted to do just one or two pieces of elastic. You can put them side by side and do them, or you can do them where you do one on, one on top of the other. So you could have one inside, and because they're elastic, it's going to spread. But because I don't have elastic, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do instead for mine, okay? But you don't have to do it my way, you can do it anyway. And, and because mine has a, a, a flap on it or a lip on it, I may go ahead and sew my ribbon here to wrap around, I don't know, I haven't decided, or my string. Okay, so you want to find the center, you want to fold your whatever you're using in half. Now realize you can make this out of anything. So if you have a piece of fabric that you liked, if you had a piece of 
um, vinyl or um, anything. You could use it, you could do it with felt. You could even do it with like one of a kind paper this, or make your fabric, you know, your faux fabric paper. Sorry, I can't, my head is, is not thinking very clearly. Okay, so I'm going to put my holes one neck on either side of each other and either side of each other and I'm going to tie my string in it. You can do the same thing with a piece of elastic and I may go back and do it with the elastic when I get home. Okay, let me see. What, what are you guys talking about? I'm missing the whole thing. Okay. Yes, you can use anything. You can use a you could use a hair band. You could use a any elastic ribbon. You can use I have colored elastic, thicker colored elastic, but for this I wanted a thin one. Now let me go back to talking about pages. I'm sorry guys, I got off the wrong track. Okay, so if you wanted to do just your Midori faux dory as like a journal, you want it to fit on the inside. I mean if you just want to do it to uh as a writing tablet, a writing pad. Fold your pages in half. Now, if you want to staple them, staple them. You could sew them if you wanted to sew them. You could do anything. Okay, I'm missing which right, so hang on. You could, you could staple it together. You could sew it together. You could even slip them in until you decided just like this. Okay, Susan is saying, yes, you need holes for the elastic, Jennifer, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, I'm going to show you. So let me show you a couple of different ways. If you have your elastic, that's why when I, because I couldn't find my elastic. So if you had elastic, you would do it two different ways. You could do it this way, and it would work either way. So you want to you want to keep your tying in the middle. You don't have to. I guess if you wanted to have your knots on the outside, you could. So you want two holes when you're putting in your elastic. Imagine this is elastic, okay? Imagine you guys, this is, um, this is the two millimeter black elastic, okay? I'm just going to show you this really quick, like this, okay? So that's one set of holes. Do you see right here? And then you could do, and I did two sets. So I did a smaller set on the ins, on the inside curve, like this. Now, if it's elastic, it's going to work better than, and I had poked these holes because I thought I would find the elastic, but of course I don't have it, so you can't really tell. You're not going to be able to get the effect without the elastic. Okay, so because you're going to slip your pages inside here, and if it was elastic, you could slip an, you could slip another set here. Does that make sense? Does that, does that make sense? Can you see it? If it was elastic, you're going to stick one set of your Midori, one set of your uh, pages in here. Now, you do have to make sure that however you, wherever your holes are, they're going to be above the pages that you, you do. Otherwise, you're going to have to have smaller pages. Does that make sense? What did I miss, Susan? What happened with you? I missed it. Can somebody, can you repeat whatever you said? I missed whatever happened. So if you had elastic, so you would put it, you would have one higher and then one lower, and then you can slip your Midori in this side and on this side, and then you could keep adding your things, okay? But because I don't have elastic, that's not what's gonna happen here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this one and when we have our next live stream on Tuesday, I will have found my elastic and I will show you, okay? For this one, the first thing you need to do is decide how big your papers are. If they're only going to be, and you want your pages as close enough to the same size as possible. <laughs> Thanks for telling me it makes sense. Bye, Laurel, are you leaving? Okay, ladies, you have, you have watched us later. Oh, have a good night, Laurel. I'm sorry, are we boring you? I'm sorry. Okay, um... Yes, you can tie the whole thing closed with an elastic. 
So if you had a piece of elastic, okay, we're going to imagine my elastic here. I have a big fat piece of elastic, but I don't have a thin piece of elastic. Okay, so we're going to imagine our elastic here, okay? You're going to poke a hole in the center like this. Let me just go ahead and poke a hole in the center of this. Okay, with my needle. Okay, you're going to poke a hole in it. And then what you're going to do is, okay, if you're going to sign, if you're going to do it with elastic on, you'd poke a hole in the center for your closure. Okay, so what you're going to do is, you're going to poke. Pretend this is elastic. Okay, you're going to measure how much elastic you need to go around it. You're going to poke your hole and then you're going to go back into the same hole. Okay, you're going to keep whatever elastic you need out, out like this. Okay, Don, are you watching? Do you have it? Okay, do you see it? You're going to tie your elastic in the center. Tie it right here, okay? So pretend that's tied. And then, when you close your book, your elastic will go around it. That's one closure. That's one part of your Midori. Okay? Do you see that? Or faux dory or whatever dory. So that, that's how it's going to close. Now, you need to put your signatures in. Okay? If you have elastic on, first of all, you need to measure your, your inserts. So your inserts can be made of anything. You need to measure your inserts because your elastic needs to go over. So you need to put one of the, one of the holes a little bit, and, and usually you would do two holes. Yeah, two holes are about a quarter of an inch or so from the end. Yes, Renette, perfect. Okay? So then, if you wanted to do them one on top of the other, okay, then you would put one, and you would take your, and you want them to tie on the inside once again. So you would bring your thread through, your, your, okay, now you're with me, Don. Okay, cool. All right, so let me show you how we're going to do this. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys. Sometimes I think that my instructions are ridiculous. I understand them, and then I'm like, okay, nobody else understands them. Okay, so let's talk about your inserts. Now that you have your cover. Now, girls, this can be a junk journal cover, too. Okay? You can make it. It could be your Midori Fedori, but it could be also um, a junk journal cover that you use in any way. You, the kind of cool, Dawn, you know, the idea is this, is that it's almost exactly like a twine binding except you're using elastic and in a twine binding you wouldn't poke holes in your journal cover but in your Midori or Fedori you do. Your Faux Dory, Midori, Dory Dory, Junkie Dory, Trashy Dory, whatever you want to call them or, or Traveler's Notebook. So let's talk about inserts. So Inserts have, they, you could do it junk journal style, okay girls? You could totally do your inserts, you could totally do them, you could do the whole thing junk journal style. You could, I mean this is your book, you can do it any way you want. Okay, so if you want to do it junk journal style, mix up your, mix up your pages and your signature. Have some white ones, have some other, have some music pages, have some anything, okay? Just fold them in half, make sure that they're folded in half, however works for you. And then you do want, now if you don't want to adhere your pages together, you don't have to. I usually staple mine, but you can sew them together too. Okay, so let me just show you, let me just show you how I was going to do this one because I don't have a, because I don't have the elastic because it's in my abyss of my crafting boxes. And the really so silly thing is, before I went away to 
Bogota. I knew exactly where it was after I came back. Uh, girls. And I'm sure my littlest daughter, my youngest daughter, is so cute. She was like, Mom, it's probably right in front of your face. <laughs> I was like, you know what? You're probably right. Dawn, this is the easiest way ever to make a journal. Okay? Easiest, easiest, easiest way ever. And so when anybody tells me that they can't make a junk journal, I say, go for the faux dory. Okay, the dog is crying. I'm sorry, you guys. Give me one second. I think the dog got out at the fence, and now she's crying. Give me one second. I hear her crying. Is my puppet outside? Where is she? Give me one second, girls. Okay, she was an escape artist. She got out of the fence because <laughs> she because she can hear me talking in here and I'm not with her. Okay, come on. Come on. If you're going to come over here, come on, where are you? Just leave her. It's okay. So, okay, you are going to take the pages out, Luana. Okay, so wait, let's just talk about the insert. Okay, so the insert itself is going to be like like this, okay? If you want to do it regular style, I don't even know where, I don't even know where the stapler, here, let me see if this stapler has any staples in it. Okay, I have a little stapler here. I'm just going to staple some pages. Now, you can sew them together or you can staple them. You can do whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong, okay? If you want to sew them together, you're going to sew them together separate. You could take them to your sewing machine and sew them. You could, um, I don't know, anything you want, all right? But I'm just, for the sake of, so you get what I'm talking about, I'm just going to staple them. And I'm not doing a great job, so no judgment here, girls. Just staple them together. I mean, I don't have a long arm. If you have a crocodile, staple them in the middle. Okay, this is your insert. Okay, ready? You got your insert. It's already together. Okay, Lana, there's your insert. Now here's your holes. Okay, let me just get my... I like easy too, okay? I like easy too. This is probably the easiest thing you'll ever make, okay? As far as like, you know, these journaling, these journals go super easy okay so I'm gonna poke one hole here now it would be easy it would be easier if you had if you had elastic I'm not gonna lie elastic is easier because once you tie it in then you never have to do anything else you can just keep reusing your inserts over and over and over again so I'm just gonna sew one insert in so you see okay Of course, I did it the wrong way. That's just who I am, girls. It's how my day is flowing today. How my day is flowing. Okay, I want the tie on the inside, but you can do it any way you want. Even if you have elastic, you're going to tie it this way. Okay? Even if you have elastic, you're going to tie it on the inside. At least I'm going to tie mine on the inside. You don't have to tie yours on the inside. You can... Do it any way you want. If you want to tie yours on the outside, tie it on the outside. Okay, so hold one side and then hold the other side. So Luana, this is the idea. Okay, so one side, you're going to put multiple holes. So this is going to be one hole. And then you're going to do it again next to it. So you have two places to insert your elastic. All right, so this is all it is. You're going to take your elastic and you're going to tie it. If it was elastic, but mine's not elastic, but you're going to tie it. Okay? With your elastic, and this is it. 
So if you were going to do two, I'm going to show you how to do two in just a second. So, and you, this is the whole thing. So Luana, no matter what you use, if you use your, your, okay, do you see? That's it. That is what a traveler's notebook is. Do you get it? It's like so easy. You can't not get it. Now, if you wanted to add another thing in, let me just show you how to do that. Let me untie this one and show you how to do it. We're going to do two. Okay. Do you get it? Now you could have sewn your signatures together. You could sew them together with a sewing machine. You could, you could do whatever works for you. Okay. Let's see which side's bigger. Okay. So the other one is going to be just a little bit more, just a tiny bit over. They're going to be like a tiny bit apart. Okay. Right next to each other. You should try to make them even. Mine's not totally even, but you'll get the gist of it, right? You're going to understand and get the get the gist of it. Okay, now let me just show you how to, if you were going to do two, if you were going to do um, two signatures in your, multiple signatures, you could do even more than two. Okay, let me just get some big enough string. So you're going to take one, you got it, awesome, yes, imagine the elastic cord headband, yes, or the, the thing, the reason, I, you know, I don't know how this even came about, you guys, I'm not the, the I don't know the, the whole history of Midori, Fedori, whatever, I don't know it. I don't know it at all in any way shape or form but I do know that it's like a super easy way to so if you were gonna do two signatures in it okay do you see you're gonna go like this you got one up here right and then you got the, the hole right next to it can you see it you're gonna go from the outside with your elastic okay like this right and then the same thing on this side, you're gonna go in this way. Go. So there's no binding on the outside. Do you get it? There's no like strings on the outside. Okay. And then it works better with elastic, but I just have string. But do you see, you're only gonna have one knot in it. And what, you'll have one knot somewhere. Okay, so then with your one knot somewhere, you're going to go ahead and stick one fedori in this side. I mean, one, one insert on one side, do you see? And one insert on the other. You'll do another insert on this side. So do, so do, you, do you get the idea? And then on the outside, you don't have, I don't know if you can see it, but you don't have anything. You just have these two little holes on the outside. Bye Renee! So that's as simple as it gets. Does everybody understand it? Was I understood? <laughs> was I was I completely annoyingly not uh, annoyingly clear or not clear? Now if you have grommets this is a great place to use those grommets, those two little grommets on it, you know, put one on each hole, so you'd, and then the same at the bottom. My instructions are clear? Okay. Thanks, Alana. I, you know, sometimes I think they aren't. I'm like talking to myself. So what's cool about this is you can also, for those of you that are into making flowish journals, which I know many of you are, right? Many of you guys are into making the flowish journal. This is a great way to make a flowish journal. And you don't even have to sew anything. Okay? You'd, especially if you're going to give them away or you're making your supply style journal or 
you know, and then you just stick your stick your pieces in. You see? Do you guys get it? And then however you're gonna do the outside. <laughs> I hope I was clear. I'm sorry guys, I'm having my own brain dead moment today. So I hope that I was sort of clear in my in my whole extravaganza. So tell me who else is here. I see lots of you here, but heart, but not that many people chatting. So say hi, you guys. Please give me a thumbs up. That would really appreciate it. That would be super awesome. A thumbs up would be awesome. What's really fun about making your journals like this, especially if you're going to make them as gifts for people, is you didn't invest a huge amount of time doing a binding. You know, like you didn't sew this crazy binding. And if you go and you get the elastic, which will look exactly like this black cord, you know, if you go and get your elastic, you can keep putting stuff in it. And if you want to send fun happy mail, this is a great way to send some happy mail. This is... This is such a fun way to, like, because you have a little envelope, you can stick a bunch of goodies in this end. And if you felt so inclined, you could cut this end open as well. So you could have two pockets there. You could also put your library pockets that we've made inside. I mean, this is a fun way. Imagine if you just got something sweet like this in the mail from somebody with a bunch of little eclectic pages in it. And, you know, a little note. Great way to keep a shopping list. You know, and you can make these in any size. You know, it's you don't have to cut the elastic. You didn't. You only cut it one, two pla one place here. You only tie it one knot in this one. The other one you could tie it. You, you tie it the same way too. Okay. So. No, I didn't even cut it off even because I'm gonna take it apart and use it again. First, I'm gonna find my elastic and redo it when I find the elastic. But after looking through my boxes for I don't know how long, I said I forget it. So this is like a great, super fun way. I mean, this is like super, and you can do it your style. You can do it, you know, with your paper napkin. You can do it with your serendipity paper. You could do it with your jelly printed sheets. You could do it with, you know, there's so many different things that you could do. And now this is the same basic basis for those of you that want to know how to make an envelope journal. This is the same beginning for an envelope journal, envelope junk journal. Only difference is if you don't want to do it Midori style, where you where you don't have a lot of binding on it. We this only has two little. I should have done it in contrasting thread so you could see it. This only has two little holes in it. If you don't want to do it that way, in a junk journal, you would just sew the signatures in and sew through the paper. Does that make sense? I don't know. I think I'm going to go back and refix this one and do something different on this. And the, I mean, I like the inside of it. I need to still add some paper to it. You know, I need to add something. So when you look at it, I need to add a paper on the flap. But I'm liking it. And this was just with glue stick. With no um, Mod Podge or Collage Podge or Aliens or anything. This was just this glue stick. and just random brittle book pages that I have. So that is, that was it you guys. Is that like, is it easy enough for you? Is that as easy as it gets? As easy, easy, easy as it gets. And it, Dawn, if you're going to do yours and you want it to close with the elastic, just Put it through the center, tie it on the inside, and you'll have a big loop, and you'll just loop it around, and it'll close it. The middle, the middle elastic for the back of the spine will be like this. I find that. What do I do with that needle? Hang on, you guys. That's what I get for cleaning up. I function much better in a mess. So your middle elastic is going to be like this, Dawn. You're going to put it through twice through the same hole. So you're gonna 
you're going to tie, you're going to have that piece on the inside, you're going to hold it down, you're going to go back through the same hole. Okay? Back through the same hole, and you're going to end up with this, like you're going to measure it around before you cut it off, like don't cut it until you know if it fits over your journal. Okay? And then if it's elastic, it's going to fit over easy. Do you get it? So that's it. And you tie it on the inside. Okay? It's like so... Did you Do you see how like I could make so many of these for my daughter's friends and it was not like a stressful thing? Because it was, it ends up being so easy because you are, you're not worrying and stressing over the binding of it. You, and the other thing is, is that you know, you're putting in pages, so I've done some as junk journals on the inside, I've done some as uh, flowish style journals where you take it out, you know, flow books or whatever, where you take the pages out where nothing's sewn, where nothing is permanent, and I've done it where I put stickers in it, so maybe one section is like stickers and envelopes and stuff, and the other section's paper. I mean, you can't get any easier. And imagine if you did it your style, Michelle, your beautiful shabby chic style. Imagine if you shabby chic up, and, and this is a great way to use all your Happy Mail envelopes. You know all the envelopes that you get from Happy Mail? This is such a great way to use them. Paint them, decoupage them, you know. And even if you don't have this flap, you don't necessarily need it. You just need to, you just need to make sure that you sew your elastic in so you can close it, right? So, I mean, it's just a super fun, easy, super simple way to make a journal. There's like, it's a no fuss, no muss way to make a journal. Well, ladies, I am going to give you guys all a really big hug. And just know that I am in your court and I'm on your side join our Facebook group join our Facebook group the link is in the um, one of this will be something that you make all the time and it's so easy and you can make it out of a bill envelope too so you could do it out of this too you see like it if you if you made it out of all the the mail envelopes that you got you could do them the same way it's just the it's just the technique you know it's just like the idea of of putting it all together. Join our Facebook groups, ladies. Please join mine. You can join Michelle's too. Michelle's is in her link in her in her um at um in her videos. So go to Michelle Scott on YouTube and join her Facebook group as well. She has beautiful, beautiful things posted in her group and lots of creative ideas. And join ours. It, it'll, the link will be in the box. I think I put it in the last couple of boxes. Please give me a thumbs up. I would love that. Um, I don't know what I want to make on Tuesday. I may come back and show you how I finish these once I've gotten the uh, the elastic out of the out of the out of my storage thing. And um, maybe we can. I've got a bunch of junk journals I'm still working on and that kind of sort of thing. Anyway, ladies, I'm sending you all a huge, huge, huge big hug. And as always, 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 from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so, so, so much aloha. So much aloha. Hey, Carol. Join our Facebook group. Join, join, join. We would love to have you. Um, Michelle, write the name of your Facebook group in the, in the comments. Dawn, I'm so happy you were here. Diana wants to make toilet paper roll journals. Okay, we can do that. I've done that. Michelle's uh, Facebook group is The Artful Crafter Where Imaginations Meet. Okay, friends, I love you guys so much. And thanks for hanging out with me. And till I see you guys on Tuesday. Till next time. Big hugs and always lots and lots and lots and lots of aloha. Take care.